Hi, everybody. I'm Coach Jordan McConnell, head coach of Ottawa Swimming, and today we're going to look at strength training for swimmers. Uh, first of all, you're doing strength training. Make sure that you have the nod of, or of approval from your doctor or your physio or your coach uh, before you undertake any kind of training, especially if you have any problem with the shoulders. Be very, very cautious with that. We're talking about functional strength, so I'm going to choose, I've chosen a bunch of exercises that will uh, apply directly to what are otherwise the weak points in swimmers. Um, of course, when you're working on functional strength, you should always be working on mobility. And we do have some mobility uh, videos on our YouTube channel that I encourage you to take a look at. Um, the major issue that swimmers have is their internal, you know what the major problem that most adults have, internal rotators, especially the pectorals, get too tight and then draw and pull on the rotator cuff. So there's a lot of focus there with uh, what we're going to be doing. Whenever you do strength training, leave your body wanting more. Focus on the quality of the movement as opposed to the heavy load. Never sacrifice the quality of the movement um, for the load. And the equipment that you'll need for this workout, we're going to do three different sets with three different set, uh, types of equipment. We're going to do a dumbbell, uh, a band, light band, light resistance band, and then a body weight set. So we're going to start on the band, and there's basically three movement patterns that we're going to be focus on, focusing on with each piece of equipment. Um, an IYT for the scapula, ro a rotator cuff movement, a row movement, an overhead movement, and then some core activation. So we're going to start on the band with IYT. I highlight this in other videos as the one exercise also immersion do. So we're going to start off and do five repetitions with our feet shoulder width apart and bent and the transverse abdominis tummy pulled in. You're in water ski position, elbows are soft, and you're then going to pull both hands up over the head into an eye and then down and then up and out for a Y position and down, and then up to the side. I said we're going to do five reps. Let's do this a couple times through, then we'll change position. I, Y, and T. Our next position is kneeling. So when you do your own workouts, you can choose which exercise, which position you do and rotate it every week or so. For the purpose of this video, we're going to go through all the positions in one set. So stomach pulled in, I, Y, B. Now come up into a semi-squat or lunge position and try another final set from that position. I, Y, and T. Let's take a little break. We're going to come back and just do a little more of that, um, including some single arm and uh, some consecutive singles and some pumps. So we're doing. We'll do the standing. It's the easiest position to do it in. So a single arm. Uh, IYT. We're going to go IYT one arm, then do the other. Let's go up. Single arm. I. Y. T. And now the other one. I. Y. Whoops. Y. And T. And I think finally we'll do uh, some, uh, you know what, let's move on. Uh, I was going to do some, you can do consecutive. So you could do one, two, three, and then go over. I think you get the idea of that, uh, of that movement. Staying on the band, of course, we're going to do a very simple rotator cuff exercise. So with the band, and when you're doing a single arm exercise as this is, uh, if you, you can have both handles, which increases the load, or you can have a single handle. There's not a big point, a big benefit. You can do internal rotation, 
All right, so that means elbow to the side and your um, anchor side arm starts pointing out and brings it across. So when you're doing this, think about your shoulder blades and squeeze them together. Squeeze your armpit, the lateral latissimus dorsi as well. Do five reps of internal rotation. Again, if you don't have time for this exercise, this is one to draw. Internal is not as important as external. So five reps. Then we're going to shorten that band. We're going to go to the away arm, far farthest away from the anchor point. Tuck the elbow in. Do external rotation. This is the important one. Again, tighten your armpit, tighten the scapular muscles, and we're going to bring it out and across. And we'll do that five times, nice and slow. A light band is what I, I recommend. Always err on the side of being too light as opposed to too heavy. And then let's turn it around and do the opposite. So we'll do internal rotation first. And then external rotation. So there's, uh, we did the IYT, we did the rotator cuff with the, the band, and now we're going to do a very simple rote, but there's lots of options that I'm going to talk about. So we're going to do a uh, standing rote, knees bent, transverse abdominis, tummy pull in. We're going to go, going to go with high elbows, so water ski position, and now we're going to pull in and pull the scapula together, your shoulder blades, pull them together. Let's do five reps. Now, with any standing exercise, including the IYT, one option to challenge your balance is to go one leg. So let's try five reps standing on one. There, let's do two reps standing on one leg, two standing on the other. You can then do the very same um, variety of position. You can do a lunge position or a kneeling position. Um, that's really good because it isolates the, uh, the torso for a little bit more. Let's go with a lunge. Let's do five in a, let's do uh, yeah, just five in a lunge, with one leg forward. If you were choosing this option for your workout, you would do five with one leg forward and five with the other. 10 is a good number of reps when you're doing these swim exercises. Okay, so there's the row. There's one more option I'm going to show you. So let's stay in lunge and put our opposite leg to get forward is some pumps. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull it back and then you're going to do a three count of, of small movements backwards. One, two, three, pull, back, one, two, three, so oscillation, one, two, three. Just loading the scapular muscles, which are our major, our number one target in swim work, uh, in a slightly, slightly different manner. Doing overhead work, so that's the next category. Doing overhead work with the band, a little bit tricky. There's not a big range of movements you can do, but there is one. If you can have a lower anchor point, if you have two anchor points, and you can move your band down to uh, about a foot above the floor, that's a good option. So it doesn't matter. So you're going to have your back to the anchor spot. It doesn't really matter if the band is over your arm or under six and one half dozen of the other. So semi squatted, transverse abdominals pulled in, a little more forward flexion, and we're going to do a shoulder press. So you're going to start with your elbows at a right angle, straight out from your shoulder, and then you're going to extend your arms straight in front of you and back. Let's do five repetitions. Pause at extension. Let's stand it up. 
and then we can do one arm. So if you wanted to load it a little more, these are pretty strong muscles. Let's do both handles. If you feel comfortable with this, both handles in one hand. Let's do four reps on each arm. Of course, the further you are away from the anchor spot when you're using a band, the harder it is. You want to be careful not to overstress the band. You know, as a, as a strength training coach, I've always, through my whole career, I've favored um, more exercises, fewer reps, and fewer sets of more exercises, more variety of movement patterns. So today I'm showing you three sets. I'm going to show you a band set, a dumbbell set, and a body weight set. Um, you can choose one of those sets to do, or you could really, if you had time, do a little bit of all of them. Be fantastic. We're heading down now. And we're going to do a kick set. No fins, no board, just the floor. If you've done Pilates before, this may look familiar. But you know, when you kick, there's a lot of core activation going on. So we're going to start on our back. And what I typically do is count one leg. So count um, two kicks as one. Uh, we're going to do uh, five, kick, five kicks, kick cycles on our back. So hands go under your hips to raise them up a little bit. Legs are straight. If you're a little higher, it's easier. A little lower, it's harder. You really got to pull your stomach in. So let's do five cycles. One, two, feet pointed, legs straight. Good. Then we move on to our side. So head resting on the arm, a little bit of stability here, and we're activating the side for the loop obliques. Lift it up, and let's do five cycles. One, two, three, four, five. Over onto our stomach. Don't keep, you gotta keep the stomach tight here, even though you're laying on it. Hands at your side, and five double kicks. One, two, Three, four, five. And then we finish on the other side. I'll spin around for the camera. Head on the arc. Bring it up. And one, two, three, four, five. So you don't have to stop. You could rotate through that. But just remember, always keep that transverse abdominus tight because we're trying to train it. So that's your band set. We've got the IYT, we've got the rotator cuff, the row, uh, the overhead, pillar press, and the kicking. Next, we're going to look at dumbbells. Same thing, if you haven't done these exercises before, then go really light. Uh, go with three or five pounds. Learn, leave your body wanting more, and if, if you feel nothing at all, then the next time you do it, maybe just a little heavier. All right. So how to do an IYT motion with dumbbells? Very simple. You're going to forward reflection in a semi-squatted position. Stomach's drawn in. And hands start at your side. Shoulders are pulled back. And we go I, Y, T. Let's go one arm. I, Y, T, and the other arm. I, Y, T. Good. Stand up. Um, so that's I, Y, T with the dumbbell. Next is the rotator cuff. We're going to have to do two different exercises here. The first is the, the sword unsheathing. So we're going to stand in an athletic stance, knees bent, stomach drawn in. And you're going to imagine this is a sword and it's in a sheet, a sheet on your hip. What you're going to do 
is in one movement in a straight line close to your body. I'll do it slowly first. You're going to pull it out right across the chest in a straight line, extend your sword to the sky. Let me uh, tip the camera up so you can see that full extension. So, just like that. Okay, so I want you to do five reps on one arm, five on the other. And I'll show you side on how it stays close to the body. It doesn't come far out from the body. Stomach on in. You're not twisting at the waist, you're staying square to the front. When you're done five on one arm, five on the other. No variation for that. And I suppose you can do it on one leg if you wanted, uh, if you were really good at it in the balance. Uh, next up, we've got our rowing motion. The, the classic option is a, a bent row, but I have a second option to show you as well. So, bent row, you're going to be in semi squatted position like we were at the start for the IYT, hang dumbbells down, and then pull them up, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Let's do five repetitions. Back neutral, very important. And now let's alternate for four. One, two, three, and four. So this transverse abdominis is in, keep that lower back neutral. My preferred dumbbell row is a, from a single leg um, Romanian deadlift position. So this requires a little bit of balance. And for that reason, I recommend having a chair beside you or a wall. You can just check your balance. So in this case, I'll have you do um, three rows and then stand up and then um, change legs and go down and do three. Together. So what's going to happen is you're going to come over. The wall's there to check your weight, your balance. You can go just to 45 or a little bit more. And then do three repetitions of row. You'll feel your glute med starting to fire on the outside of your standing leg. And then over slowly on the other side, three reps. Good. The um, overhead movement. Pretty easy with dumbbells. There's two though. So the classic would be shoulder press. So athletic stance, knees bent, stomach drawn in, elbows up, and we press overhead. Remember, we did this with the band when we were uh, bent forward. Five repetitions. And then let's, uh, let me challenge you a little bit. Let's go one leg. Right? But then we're going to alternate. One. Pull in your core. Four reps. So you can see, you can see the fundamental variety and, and options you can bring in. One leg, alternating. You could do um, oscillation, pulsing, stuff like that. Uh, the second overhead movement is one I really love for swimming, and that's the waiter carry. So, um, this is a, an exercise that requires a fairly heavy load. So in this case, uh, uh, 10 pounds, a couple of fives, that'll, that'll do it for me, but I would typically do it with maybe 20. Um, you could use something other than dumbbells. You could use a lawn, I don't know, something you can grip, something that's heavy, all right? So later care. Really thinking about stabilizing the shoulder when the hand's overhead. I'm gonna pull the stomach in, stand nice and tall, scapula together. We're gonna push the weight above our head and hold it there. Think about your scapula, stabilize. Then short steps, we're gonna walk out. Five, as many as 10 steps. And feel that posterior shoulder. And step back. Good. 
went down, we switch sides. Good. We put the dumbbells down and going down the, to the floor for four. So this is the dumbbell set, but with the core, we don't need it. It's all body weight. So um, for this set, the dumbbell set, I chose to highlight uh, the options we can do with plank. So option number one on plank is an easy plank. So you can do all of these movements off your knees, straight line from your, from your knees to your shoulders. I prefer to do um, the uh, elbow as opposed to hands because doing, doing a, a thumb is doing a lot of plank or push-ups tightens those internal rotators. So you can do it here or do a full plank. So that's number one. And I'm going to explain and then let's do it for 30 seconds and I'll move you through the options. And you can do as many of the options or as few as you wish. So we're going to do normal plank for about five seconds. Then I'll have you tap your hands. Tap, 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 um, which uh, creates a torque load. And uh, then we'll bring it over onto the side. So when we bring it onto the side, we take our hands from this, from this way to parallel. And then we bring it onto the side. If a full side plank is too uh, much below for you, put your bottom leg, put the knee down, and bend the knee at a right angle. Okay. So that's the uh, third thing I'm going to do. The final thing is rotational plank. This is the, the most um, difficult. Is you come down, you reach through and tap, and then you come up on the other side. Come through and tap, and you alternate. Okay, so we're going to try to fit those all in thirty seconds. Ready? Get a plank. Tap. All right. Let's go on the side. And the other way. And back, and now we go rotational. So it's side, bring it through and tap, and then the other way. All right, Ooh, that was good. So that completes the dumbbell set. And now we move into body weight, um, which might sound like it's the easier option. <laughs> It's simple, but it's hard. So um, the first exercise is the IYT. Uh, I, we could do it um, kneeling, but let's stand up. Okay. So um, you're on holiday, you have no equipment whatsoever. Activating those muscles, it doesn't have to be big loads. You can do more repetitions. So we do exactly what we did with the with the dumbbells, but we just think about muscular tension and try to really really squeeze them. So we're in the forward flex position, hands start the side, and we go I pause Y pause. So give a little more of an opportunity. Now, when you do this with no dumbbells, go thumbs up. On this set, do five second holds. Five, and now Y, and T. Good. So shake it up. You've done a lot of, a lot of great work so far. Um, next, the, um, the rotator cuff is used 
uh, considerably in recovery. And people don't think about their recovery muscles. They don't think about that load of the scapular muscles of bringing the arm forward. Uh, they always think about the pull as being the movement that exhausts the muscles. But I'll tell you, if you don't, um, if you only pull, uh, for example, you do dry land training, you only pull. When you swim, you're going to find some, some real fatigue as a result of simply recovering what seems simple. So here's a very simple exercise that has a great training effect for recovery. We're in that forward flex position, and we're basically going to do a double arm uh, recovery simulation or a stroke simulation. We're going to start out back, and then we're going to bring elbows up and squeeze the scapula, and then we're going to extend forward, and then back to elbows up, and then push back. Up and forward, up and back. That's two, let's do it eight more times. As many as eight, you can stop early, of course. Keep that stomach pulled in and your back neutral. Good. Stand it up, shake it out. So there's a rotator cuff exercise. Really, really great for recovery. Um, now, one of the challenges with body weight, any kind of body weight training, is a rowing motion or a pulling motion. If you've got a chin up bar, that's great, but um, it's typically excessive load. But here's an exercise that's simple to do that does have a decent training effect. We're going to go onto the floor, a downward dog, the yoga posture, and we're going to do some stroking movements with our hands. So with downward dog, you can keep the knees bent and the heels up, or make it more challenging by straightening your knees and your heels down. But we're always thinking about those stomach in and neutral back. When you go into downward dog, and then with our hands shoulder width apart, and elbow slightly bent. We're going to bring our hand back and touch. Just touch our leg. Let's do three more. And then carefully stand up. So the, um, actually I mixed things up a little bit there. That was our overhead motion. <laughs> our rowing motion is prone jumping jack arms. Now we're going to do that, right? So the, the one exercise we just did is our overhead exercise for, for the body weight order. Now, I guess maybe it was subconscious my subconscious trying to have me skip this exercise because uh, the pro jack arms is hard. Uh, we're going to be using those scapular muscles a lot. And you just do, do a, a few, um, don't exhaust yourself. So very, very simple. In a prone position, you're going to lift your arms and move them slowly forward, forehead down, and back. Keep them off the floor. Let's do three more. There. It's a, it's a challenging one, especially after all we've done already today. Our final exercise as part of the body weight is a fun one and a challenging one. And that is uh, sort of a two part. It's a baby roll. 
take the camera down a little bit. So, um, but it's this is quite challenging. So don't be discouraged if you struggle a little bit with this. You're going to start on one hip, legs out, arms extended, and you're going to initiate that. We want the core to be the major mover here because this is your core exercise for the body weight set. So you're going to pull your stomach forward and your um, uh, abdomen, and you're going to roll across your chest the opposite hip. The challenge comes with that momentum stopping yourself from going too far. Let me see under pressure if I can do it. All right, so I want you to try that five times down and back. <clears throat> the big thing is to try not to use your arms or legs to break, which you've already discovered probably. <laughs> All right, rest. Next. We're going to add a fun little um, sort of mental um, element to it. Because obviously we, hit, we rotate from hip to hip um, when we swim. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with a, a stroke. So you're going to, you're, when, when you're on your side, your arm is pointing down and you're going to do a little stroke then as you come forward, that will initiate your roll to the other side. So from, as you come forward, you'll roll, stroke, roll, stroke, roll, stroke. All right, try that. Good. All right. So there you go. You've got you've gone through three workouts: a band, a dumbbell, and a body weight. Um, the three sort of movement patterns that we looked at are the IYT, the rotator cuff, the row, the overhead, and the core. Um, make sure you're warmed up before you do this. I have a warm up video on the YouTube channel as well, and you've done some mobility work. Um, and getting to the pool is challenging. So if you can't get to the pool, it's frustrating. You're thinking, I really want to swim twice a week, but I can't do this workout and it'll help a lot. I'm Jordy McConnell for Ottawa Swim.